whatever time it is in your um, area, you're welcome to the Magbridge Consult Conversations with Humans in Development World, um, sharing live experiences on how they started their journey. If you're just starting, my name is Faith Afolabi and I'm the host for the Magbridge Consult um, show. So we're going to go on a very short break and when we get back, we'll meet our guests for today. Hello everyone, welcome back from that short break. My name remains Faith Apolabi and I'm the founder of Magbridge Consult and the host for the Magbridge Consult Conversations with Humans in Non-for-Profit in Nigeria and abroad. And today we'll be discussing with our first financial guest ever since the show started in the season one and this season two. So he is Ayola Olasuyi and he's a financial expert in one of the international um, development sector in Nigeria and he'll be sharing his experience. So sit back, relax and let's meet him. Yeah, my name is Ayola Olasuyi. Uh, I'm a seasoned finance uh, professional. I have a series of ex- years of experience on uh, USAID, EU, DV, and other corporates uh, funded projects. Uh, presently, I'm working on a uh, USAID funded uh, uh, project, peace and uh, conflict mitigation in the States as a finance and admin officer there. It's nice okay. having you, all right? All right, that's a lot, Ayo. So please, can you share with us your journey, how you started your um, non-for-profit journey? Because it's not um, something very common. Okay. I'm sure you wanted to work in a bank or something. Mm. Maybe you have worked in a bank. So just share your story on how you started. <laughs> okay, uh, well, working in an NGO, it's, it's uh, something that I've actually dreamed about. I wanted to, I really loved. But uh, even though I don't really know much about uh, NGO as at that time, uh, it's actually when uh, I was working on one of the manufacturing company as at that time, when I lost my job with uh, Echo Bank due to restructuring. Okay. So uh, there's this uh, accounting software that was introduced to the organization called Italy ERP9. I wasn't among the people that were supposed to be trained for that uh, software, but I utilized my break period to, to learn and due to the fact that I have accounting background, so it wasn't too long for me to catch up. I was able to catch up within a short period of time, and I was able to use the software in the organization. Uh, so, uh, and the opportunity come, boom, that as an NGO that was looking for an account uh, supervisor manager in management officer in Kano as of that time, with Sally ERP experience, that was how I applied. And when I applied, I was called, the following day I was called for an interview, I went there, the MD of the organization, because it's a local uh, NGO, they just asked me to generate one report, this and that, bring out the uh, system. Since you said, I said I know Tali HRP. And I was able to bring out those reports within a short period of time. I said, then the next thing, we started discussing salary. That was how I started my NGO uh, career. Then from there, I moved after, uh, it's also, also a USID project they were doing then, it's a WASH project. In the uh, Castina, Bauchi, and so after that, at the end of that project, I was in that organization. I was able to help the organization to restructure the, uh, the charts of accounts. I was able to build, uh, bring out um, a lot of policies that centers around uh, cash management, centers around uh, procurement policies, that centers around uh, travel advances. And uh, so I was able to do all those things. And I closed out the projects, the USID wow. project in the organization. At the end of the project, I joined um, Elinkela International as well. I was there for a short period of time. After Elinkela, I joined Save the Children International. I was in Lagos. After Save the Children, I was there for two years. Then present, I'm in uh, part West Africa. Wow, that's a really so that's journey a- and a very interesting one. So Ayo, please, can you explain to what, someone that is a novice out there, what is the role of a financial manager in a non-for-profit sector? Because I know you mentioned procurement. Oh, that's kind of part of logistics. So you can just explain to us briefly, what is your role? What is it all about? Okay, oh, yeah. uh, let me just say to you that as a finance person, uh, so a finance person is the last, uh, is the last control uh, place in an organization, in an NGO, to, so to say, okay. because uh, it, 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 they are expected to, to uphold the policies of the organization. They're expected to uphold the policy of the donors. 
because uh, no no matter how good your dramatic activity is, if you don't have a very good and fantastic financial uh, documentation to back it up, it's as yeah. good as not doing anything. Yeah. Because this will give you a uh, good will and the sight of the donors. And with having a good will and the sight of the donor, that means you'll be able to get more funds. Yeah. There will be sustainability in the organization and there will be going constant in the organization. But in a situation whereby you are unable to cut uh, the, the, the expenses, you are unable to, to make you good use of the fund that the donor gives to you, then you will not be given another fund. Opportunity, yeah. There are, there, are, there are some things that are expected to, to uh, that each of the organization is, I mean, is expected of uh, uh, um, an NGO to do. We're talking about sustainability, we're talking about reliability. Is the, is the fund reasonable? If you are the one that holds this particular amount of money, will you expect you would spend that money the way you are spending the NGO money? Or is mm. it because it's the funder's money? That's why you decided to be spending it anyhow. Something mm. that's worth maybe five naira, which is your money that you spend five naira on it. Do you not say because it's a donor's money, it's a free money, do you not say it's 100 naira? Mm. No, it's not reasonable. Mm. What about liability? Is this thing, is it approved? Mm. Does it fall within policy of the economy of the donor? Each of the donor have their own uh, policies that they follow. But the, the, the particular project that you are running, does the policies uh, the, 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 the thing you want to do, does it fall in line with, uh, with the policy? Does it agree with uh, what the policy of the, the donor really wants? Is that the way they want you to report it? Because we're talking about donors does not want you. USAID, for instance, they have a lot of policies that center around um, Latin America uh, procurement. It's very, very essential. They have to follow the procedures. There are, there are several thresholds that you need to do that has to do with a simple procurement, that has to do with formal procurement, that has to do with uh, uh, bid analysis yeah. and uh, open bid for this time. So it's at different stages that it has to be followed. So those, are the, those are the things that uh, wow. as a finance person. It's getting interesting. We're going to go on a very short break. Now, if you're just joining us, my name is Faith Falabi and I'm your host. And we've been speaking with uh, Mr. Ayola Olashuyi, a financial expert in the non profit um, sector. Don't go away. Call your friends, come and watch, subscribe on our YouTube channel. Stay tuned. Welcome back from that short break, and uh, my name remains Faith Apolabi, and we've been speaking with Mr. Ayola Olashuyi, and he is a financial expert working with PAC International. Am I am I right? In the northern part of yes, Nigeria. Part of okay, so he has shared his experience on how he was able to build himself when he was in the banking sector, not minding the challenges he faced when he was told that he couldn't go on a training. Am I right? He was able to learn yes. the packages used for financing. And there, when the opportunity showed up, he was able to get the international jobs um, roles that he is in currently. He has worked with several and he is in uh, one of currently. Okay, now, so I, uh, if you someone is watching you and they'd like to know, uh, what did you study in school? How, would they, how can they start? They want to get into non-for-profit sector. How can they start? How can you advise someone to start? Okay, okay, I, I have my finance oh, okay. on the University of Adria uh, Then I proceeded to Amore Bello University to have my MBA. Then, uh, you know, all those things, we are, not, we are in, in a dynamic environment. Mm -hmm. So we cannot really base your knowledge on your first degree. There are some other skills that you needed to add mm -hmm. for you to be relevant in, in the financial sector. Even though uh, being a fellow of a shattered uh, institute of accounting is, is the peak, but there are some other aspects of it that you have to, to, to learn. There is, a, uh, there is digital accounting, there is forensic accounting, there is taxation, there is that basically for somebody that is coming in, you need to know uh, everything about Excel. You have to be very, very good in making use of Excel, you know your private table, you know, you know, some e, you know, you need to get the grounded in how to use Excel because you use Excel a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information that you need to, to, uh, to uh, that you need to prove, I mean, to, 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 to present in such a way that the management will be able to take uh, a very good decision. Mm -hmm. But by the time you are saying all 
playing all the uh, budget line, expense line, seeing all these things like that. We will not be able to understand. Yeah. But present it in such a way, it will be cashy. It will, it will be to summarize it using Excel. Uh, so do study, that's the basic thing. People know that you have your first degree in the finance related uh, aspect, but you still need to go ahead and get to know about all these uh, Excel. Then you take other training. Build uh, oneself on uh, the policies of each organization, I mean, each of the donors, because as time goes on, they, they change their policies. USCR has changed, they change their policies, OBM, and I did ADR now. So if we still stay in the era of using the OBM, you know, by the time you go for an interview and you are asking one question or the other, you are still making reference to OBM, you will know that oh, this person has not done anything. OBM means Office of Management and Budget. That is the uh, office that is responsible for managing a USCID uh, policy. So it talks about uh, tra uh, traveling policies and uh, uh, what is allowable, what is allocable, what you can do and not do. But they've not changed everything now to uh, ADS. So ADS is, uh, is an operational guidelines. It contains uh, 200 chapters that is uh, correct into six series we have the uh the agency organization the affairs programming acquisition and assistance human resources management service and uh, budget and finances so that is what we have under the uh, that's what the ads uh, covers generally so each under each of this of this line and i have different things that we need to that is expected to be as to know as a part of your hands so by yeah. the time there is anything for. You'll be able to know what does the policy says pertaining to this particular thing, pertaining to the acquisition, pertaining to uh, equipment, pertaining to budgeting, finance, uh, HR, and the likes. So that is what it needs in, in a nutshell. Okay, so um, are these kind of trainings online for someone to go um, learn, or you have to be working? You have to work in an organization sponsored by USID before you get that. Uh, there are there are uh, some trainings online. They can get, uh, for instance, there are a lot of free training online, uh, disaster ready. They okay. have series of books. Oh, one can online. go there and, and get, yes, they can get it online and it's free. Just for you to just register with your email address, they get a series of uh, uh, trainings. They can go there and get, and it's also certificated. You can get a certification at the end of it. Although there are some that you have to pay some amount of money. Money, yeah. Uh, even though the, the education, if you think education is cheap, you can try ignorance. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that is very <laughs> strong one. Okay, so um, do you get to relate with other program um, officers while you work, or you just sit in your office and you handle their requisitions? So do you have to be all around, or you, you find where you are? That's awesome. You are expected to relate with everybody in the organization, be it admin, be it a program person, because uh, and the program uh, when it relates to the program person. They will come up with their activity. So it is the responsibility of the accounting and the finance department to help us come in, to help them come up with the details. These, these, these are the things, are the things that is uh, required for these uh, particular activities. And as a training, you need uh, you need all, you need to feed these people, you need a uh, stationary, you need logistics. So what are the uh, the cost components of all these things? So it is the responsibility of the finance person to bring up all this. Their own is okay. We need to do an activity. This is what this activity is all about. So it's finance person that are asked, okay, how many people are you expecting for this activity? We are expecting 50 people. So it's responsibility of finance person to okay, they ask for the uh, admin unit to get an all that will accommodate 50 people. Are you accommodating these people? Where are they coming from? Are they within the vicinity? Are they coming from outside the public? Okay, if they are coming within the vicinity, you are supposed to give them transport to the enforcement. If they are coming from a far place, are you lodging them? Let's talk about their parents. I talk about how they, are you giving them mileage or you are getting a car hire for them? We look at the cost effectiveness. If you are giving them a car hire, is it cheaper than giving them a mileage? And does the policy organization support this thing? So we look at the uh, cost effectiveness of this thing because you cannot, you, at, at, at the end of it, you have to get value for, your, for the money that you are spending. Yeah, yeah. And the same, you have to be yeah. Yeah them or the value for money for everything so putting all this together you need to relate with both the program staffs you need to relate with uh, as well as admin people so at the end of the day when you put all these things together you need to also check the budget plan and ensure that there is no overspending and at the same time there is no spending 
in a situation whereby you observe that there is an overspending, you need to call the attention of the program manager or your supervisor to ask. We observe that there is an overspending on this, and what are the things that you think could be I mean, responsible for this? Uh, what are the factors responsible for this? For instance, look at during this COVID-19 obviously, there are a lot of activities that are being aired online. Mm -hmm. So the bond rates will definitely be low, mm -hmm. but we'll be able to achieve the set objective of I yeah. mean, meet uh, the deliverable. So the, the money for uh, for the all renter is out of it. The money for transportation for the participants is out of it because everything is now being uh, virtual. Yeah. So that's can part of the money can be compared to the data that can be given to uh, the participant to be held I mean, for the program. So yeah. in that, let's assume you you budgeted like let's say million naira. For this particular activity, but at the end of the day, you will know that you'll be spending probably 200,000 naira. So it is the responsibility of the finance person to be able to explain that you actually budgeted one million naira for this activity, but you are spending 200 naira. These factors that respond, I mean, that uh, are responsible for this low bond rates. Okay. And at the same time, if there is a spend, we'll be able to say, okay, for this, this, and these are the factors that are responsible for probably. Uh, something that is being sold in the uh, maybe there is square, square scarcity. You budgeted 200 naira per, per mile, mm -hmm. but due to the first scarcity, the, the price of uh, transportation has skyrocketed. So you have no choice than to, and the activity must be must hold. So you've gotten an approval to get something that is higher than that. So you'll be able to, to explain that these are the factors that are responsible for both the uh, the, the underspend and the overspend. So you need to go all around with yeah, the all the people in the department. Wow, yes. that's a lot. That means you also have to have people management skills because I see um, some you need to be able to relate with humans so that you can understand everybody's point of view, um, yes. regardless of how you feel, exactly. so you don't bring exactly. your emotions exactly. into what you do. Okay, wow. Exactly. This is okay, we're and going to in, in addition to in addition to that, you need okay. to have an uh, anger management training. Wow. Because, uh, <laughs> when, when when it comes to when it comes to program staff. <laughs> program staff's tips is to ensure that the project, the activity is done. Yeah. They don't care about how they do it. While wow. the finance staff will be looking at the documentation, they'll be looking yeah. at the, the results. They are looking at what will the auditor says, what mm -hmm. will happen to this project after we might have finished this activity. Maybe Requesting for one documentation or the other, they will be requesting yeah. for justification. But instead of requesting for that, the program staff may be thinking that you are trying to store their project. Their project. <laughs> yes, that's what they will be thinking that you are trying to. Meanwhile, it's for the benefit of the whole organization. Because at the end of the day, the auditor comes and discovers that we don't have a justification for doing this, this, and that. If the cost is disallowed, it has to be paid back by the organization. Mm. So just take uh, just that little moment understand each other, get the necessary documentation, and get the projects done. So, finance staff are not project managers, I mean, program staff enemy. We are all working together <laughs> to achieve. Yeah, yeah because generally, people think financial people, they are so difficult to work with. But, um, yes. we, because we don't understand the implication of when you mismanage funds, but you've explained mm. this, and it, this has been very interesting. So we'd like to have your final words for those watching and they want to um, start up a, fin a, a financial role in non-for-profit, how they go about it, whether they've studied banking and finance or not. What do you, adv what do you tell them? What's the last word? Okay, uh, what I would do, uh, we just keep developing each other. Find the, the, the basic, the first degree is the basics. Be it you have a, a first degree in finance, in accounting, in business, in economics. So you must have those financial um, degree, unlike program persons. Yes, you must have the financial background. Oh, okay. Yes, that's the first order condition. So you must have that. If you have that, then you now keep building yourself. Add this. Add you can now uh, you can now go register as a chartered accountant. Register and begin to write at, uh, those exams. Do online trainings. Put all those things together. With with that. Get to understand uh, because uh, finance is, I mean, accounting is also going toward the era of uh, software now. Learn how to make use of those uh, software. By the time you become conversant with those things, most of those software, there is nothing so special about it. Just get to understand one or two out of it. You know that it's just the interface that differentiated one from the other. Yeah. If you have the basic 
understanding. It's just the interface. You get to understand it. On the job, you you you, you, you get it. fine. Leave the skies. Just for you to just do your own build. When the opportunity comes, you grab it. That's just uh, what I just have to say. The sky is your limit. So if you're just joining us, this is the Mark Rich Condol, the media chat room with conversations with human and non-profit sector in Nigeria and abroad. And um, we've been speaking with Mr. Ayola Olashuyi and um, he has shared his experience and I hope it has inspired someone out there that want to pick up a career in financial sector, in a um, non-for-profit sector, in the financial role in the non-for-profit sector. Thank you so much for um, having for, um, accepted our, our invite, Mr. Ayo. And um, thank you viewers for staying with us. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please feel free to go to YouTube and subscribe, share the link with your friends and um, stay tuned. We have so much more coming your way. And for me, it's a bye. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.